Okay, hey everyone, we're group 11 and we're driving into the future. Um, our group consists of George, Jesus, Erickson, and myself, Dave. So for our problem statement, we wanted to address sustainability within our air. One of the leader, leading contributions of air pollution were motor vehicles. The EPA estimates 28% of the U.S. greenhouse gas emissions are derived on transportation alone. And more than half that percentage is attributed by light duty cars, such as SUVs and sedans. We made our focus in New York City since it's infamous for its high traffic volumes. We also saw that the average New York City driver spends 13% of their time sitting in traffic. So the main takeaway here is that since stop and go traffic is so accustomed to New York City, in the long term it runs a lot of fuel. So, uh, our vision for our model combines the problems associated with high traffic congestion with the newer advancements within car technology. So by incorporating autonomous vehicle behavior within our models, we are effectively phasing out human-centric driving, eliminating traffic congestions, and minimizing emissions. On your left, you can see what is called the phantom traffic jam, which is the abrupt effect of one car and the slow reaction times of the vehicles behind it, creating a wave of deceleration. This goes to show that we want to be able to target our consumers since they're the only gap between our reality and our goal of an autonomous future. Some of the other solutions currently on the market also use VSIM and its autonomous vehicle parameters. However, their objective is slightly different than ours in that they focus more on safety and reducing the amount of accidents. They also drew their model based off New York City highways, uh, which isn't really a target of stop and go traffic like what is found in the local streets. Uh, the other models are also more focused on building newer traffic patterns and construction. So what we are contributing is three VSIM models located in the center of Manhattan on 5th Avenue from 51st Street to 48th Street, which are more focused on sustainability. In each model, we are collecting the total fuel consumption, greenhouse gas emissions, and averages in travel time, speed, and stops. We are using the help of MATLAB to connect to VSIM to collect this data. For our technology aspect, we are using the VSIM software to create traffic simulations and use built-in models to estimate fuel consumption and emissions. MATLAB has been effective in extracting and analyzing data from VSIM. With MATLAB, we were able to unlock VSIM to its fullest potential. A major part of our project was integrating autonomous vehicles in our models. First, we began by creating a new driving behavior and a whole new class, a whole new vehicle class. We increased the number of interaction objects, which has to do with the stop signs, traffic signals, and priority rules. And lastly, we decreased the braking distance between cars, allowing for more smaller gaps. So these are the two traffic models I created. On the left side is a model made up of only regular vehicles, while on the right side is a model consisting of autonomous vehicles. So one key thing that I would like to point out is the traffic that accumulates here on Fifth Avenue. And so the reason for this is that vehicles tend to wait until the last second to make lane switches. So as a result, all the cars behind them have to end up stopping. And so this ends up creating a traffic jam, as you can see right here, that um, slows down every car. So the cars that are actually trying to go straight, they now only have one to two lanes instead of the normal five lanes to get through. And so just overall, all the vehicles begin to slow down. So on the right side, you know, um, this traffic is not there anymore. And so the reason for this is because autonomous vehicles, they already have their predefined routes. So they're making lanes, which is much more in advance. And so as a result, they're not clogging up any traffic once they have to make their turns. And so the second thing that I like to point out is the traffic that occurs on the side streets here. So on the left side, you can see some traffic along 51st Street and 50th Street. So this mainly occurs because of like preference or just aggressive driving behavior that results in inconsistent following distances. So this doesn't happen in autonomous models because vehicles have fixed following distances. And so the behavioral driving aspects of, the behavior aspects of driving are eliminated. So as a result, more autonomous vehicles are able to get through the traffic lights when they are green. And so this just results in a less a small accumulation of traffic. So we were able to collect and analyze data from the traffic models using MATLAB. We collected information on vehicle emissions as well as travel time and speeds. So in a model consisting of 50% split between autonomous and regular vehicles, there was an overall decrease in fuel emissions and an increase in average speed. 
So as you can see in the chart here, the average speed rose from 4.1 miles per hour to about 4.5 miles per hour. And there was also about a 15% decrease in emissions of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. This change, however, was not as significant as our fully autonomous model, which you can see on the third column. So what we found was that when comparing our regular model against our fully autonomous model, we found that the average speed rose it more than doubled from 4.1 miles per hour to almost 10.3 miles per hour. And the average amount of vehicle stops also greatly decreased from 3.3 miles per hour to only 0.60, I mean, sorry, 3.3 stops to 0.67 stops. And so the reason that this is so significant is because constantly accelerating and decelerating has a large impact on fuel economy. So the less amount of times that you're constantly stopping and so accelerating and decelerating, the, the worse your fuel economy is gonna get. So in our autonomous model, fuel consumption was down from 263 gallons to just 111 gallons. And so this also resulted in a significant reduction in carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide emissions, with a reduction of 58%. Our models, vehicle behaviors, and results are corroborated by public data on traffic in the area. In addition, the utilization of graduate research on New York City traffic signals allow our model to best replicate real life cadences. Our non-autonomous model was fully supported by empirical information, and so the only difference between the models was the autonomous vehicle inclusion and its behavior. Throughout the length of the project, our virtual semester has definitely impacted our work. One of the biggest challenges was collaboration, given only one of us could use the simulation software at a time. So planning an access schedule, access schedule was a necessary step. Beyond that, dividing the project into phases gave us the best chance at tackling our project and reaching our goals. In conclusion, our multifaceted simulation has given us the ability to collect data on traffic and emission reductions for different levels of autonomous vehicles. The changes in emissions and vehicle speeds associated with increases in autonomous vehicles highlight the inefficiencies in human driving. These results show we should continue driving towards an autonomous future. Special thanks to Dr. Jafar and Yufei for assistance and guidance in this project, helping us every step of the way. This concludes our presentation. Thank you all for listening and we will take any questions now.